JavaScript. This programming language runs on almost everything. Ranging from embedded systems to machine learning, it seems like this little language is everywhere these days. Now, is this a good thing? Hell no. Granted, JS has a low barrier of entry and people find it easy to use it everywhere, but where JavaScript excels is in the browser. I know, some of you guys will say that it's not even excelling in the browser and you'll probably mention Wasm as an alternative. Fine, JavaScript almost excels in the browser. And, these days, it also almost excels on the server as well. So, we'll spend the next few minutes building a couple of REST API endpoints using Nest.js and we'll back these endpoints with a Prisma ORM implementation. As per their documentation, Nest.js is a framework for building efficient, scalable Node.js server-side applications. It uses progressive JavaScript, it is built with and fully supports TypeScript and combines elements of object-oriented programming, functional programming and functional reactive programming. We'll get started by making sure we are using a recent version of Node and then set up our server app using the Nest.js CLI. The process is extremely straightforward and, as a result, you'll end up with this project structure. Here are the main ideas. Nest uses TypeScript by default, which is, in my opinion, a must in most projects, but especially in server-based ones. We leverage Prettier to enforce code formatting and some basic ESLint configuration to statically analyze your code and quickly find problems. We'll write our code in the source directory, of course. The main.ts file is the entry point in our app, and in here we'll load the main app module. Nest.js uses a module graph system to structure its code. While for small apps only one module might be enough, the documentation site strongly suggests employing modules to organize everything up to the feature level. Later on, when your app is growing in size, modules can be lazy loaded only on demand to decrease the time needed to bootstrap your app. Entities such as controllers or providers can be registered inside modules and the framework will handle the dependency injection process for you. DI is an interesting and complex topic made popular in the framework world by the Angular framework. On the backend, however, DI is an extremely common pattern used to efficiently handle object instances via the singleton and the factory design patterns. While we are discussing DI and singletons, it is interesting to note that Nest smartly shares most of its entities, ranging from connection pools to services, across requests. Nest.js is built on top of the Node.js platform, which doesn't follow the usual request-response multi-thread stateless model in which every request is processed by a separate thread. Because of the single-threaded event loop, using singleton instances with global state is safe and doesn't lead to any type of concurrency issues. Since I'm mentioning the underlying text stack, it is worth noting that Nest uses Express under the hood, a popular server framework which offers a robust set of features for building enterprise-grade applications. Express has been battle-tested in production for years, so Nest.js is in good company. Looking at the code, I created a movie controller class, which is annotated with the controller decorator. You'll see that the constructor accepts a movie service entity, and this is filled in by the DI mechanism. Other than that, Nest offers decorators to cover the usual create, read, update, and delete operations. Information can be received as query parameters, path variables, or, in the case of post and put requests, as request body. Of course, serialization and deserialization is handled by default. I am not going to give you a REST crash course in this video, but these days I advise everybody to check out the Richardson maturity model for a proper overview of the REST rules. Nest.js is a huge ecosystem and supports all the features you would expect from a mature production-ready framework. In here you'll find authentication and authorization support, GraphQL modules, and various other nice utilities such as general exception handling. All these are great topics to be explored in detail, so let me know in the comments if you are interested in more content on Nest. In the second part of this video, we'll add database support in our project. Working with databases is usually one of the more complex aspects of backend development, and it can easily turn into a bottleneck if you are working with unindexed data or with unoptimized queries. In this context, it's always a good idea to use an object relational mapping tool like Prisma. We can edit in our project via npm and then 
in the schema.prisma file will define the database vendor, the credentials, and the database tables we'll use for our app. This will become the single source of truth for your database and application models. Then, we can run npx prisma migrate to get our migration files and database updates. With these in place, we can now instantiate a Prisma client and we can start working on our service files. In the service file, I'm creating the same create, read, update, and delete methods we defined in the controller, and then, using the Prisma API, we'll work on the actual implementation. Besides the nice abstraction allowing you to work with an actual programming API, the type support offers an enhanced dev experience with auto completion in the IDE and a less buggy, less boilerplate codebase. In this example, I am using a Postgres database, but Prisma offers support for a wide range of vendors. This tool is also production ready and allows you to fine tune its configuration, define connection pools, and other optimization processes so that, in production, your database will not be a bottleneck. As a quick FYI, if you are interested in more details regarding Prisma, I am linking one of my previous videos on this topic in the top right corner. If you found this video useful, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching.